So here are our first charging stations, and we have the first county vehicle that is plugged in uh, to our charging stations. And this is a really important day for Howard County because these are the first public charging stations in the county. When I say public, there is a little um, you know, screen on the charging device, and it actually has a dollar sign. And when you plug it in, the dollar sign says zero next to it because it is free to the public. So anyone uh, in Howard County who has a, or anyone, uh, who has an electric vehicle, this is now part of the network of charging stations uh, that are in our region and our state. And if we're really going to um, get off our dependence of foreign oil, which I think is very important for uh, uh, economic development, I mean economic and security reasons, and obviously the, the uh, impact on our planet, it's up to us collectively as a community, uh, government and the private sector together to provide a network of charging stations that work for people in their lives. And this is the first one. This is the first of what I hope and believe will be many uh, in Howard County. We're brainstorming uh, additional sites as we speak. Uh, we're also looking for private sector partners to install uh, charging stations uh, around the county as well because it has to work for people's lives right so this will work for anybody that works in this building anybody who works in the nearby uh, uh, buildings around here it takes about four hours to charge for a full charge um, and this is part of that network and I'm really pleased uh, with it I know that um, this vehicle has driven 775 miles so far and has only used what do you say five gallons uh, but it really is a, a very impressive, uh, impressive vehicle. Uh, with that, I want to turn it over and introduce uh, my friend Jill Sorensen, uh, who runs the BEVI, the Baltimore Electric Vehicle Initiative, um, and has really been a partner all over the Baltimore region to help deliver uh, this network of resources to electric charging stations as resources to electric vehicle owners. Again, this only really works when it works for... Uh, drivers uh, uh, schedules and, and lives and so yes you can have a charging station in your home but we've got to make sure we've got a network and we promote it and we do a lot of outreach and education and that's exactly what uh, what Jill has been doing all over Maryland so Jill thanks for joining us thank you Ken thank you and thank you Josh for the opportunity to be here this morning uh, I like to credit Howard County Ken and Josh in particular for their leadership and I think back to a time in 2009 when we were sitting at the Maryland Energy Outlook conference in Annapolis, and someone stood up and said, GM was here. They have six volts for us, and they want to know if we are EV ready. And close by sat Ken, who really, without hesitating, uh, was starting to communicate with Kathy Magruder close by and essentially responding, ready, we're Howard County. We were born ready. Uh, the leadership for sustainability and clean energy clean cities, clean communities has been here for a long time and it made our work, BEVI, a public-private partnership really very easy. Uh, what are we interested in doing? When we talk about electric vehicles, I talk about multiple tiers of investment. We hear a lot of folks talking about job creation. The transmission for the volts uh, are made in White Marsh, Maryland. What started with 200 jobs is now 800. The governor likes to talk about this and it's a, it's a real deal. It's a, it's a case of real economic development. We are creating jobs. These charging stations were produced right here in Maryland, a startup company that started with one employee, a CEO, and is now employing eight, just closed in a round of financing of $3.5 million, SemiConnect, uh, and made its largest sale of 1,500 stations. So in addition to zero tailpipe emission vehicles, when we favor electric, we can talk about multiple tiers of investment by converting built architecture, which according to the Natural Resources Defense Council is responsible for 45% of emissions. We can think about all kinds of ways of greening. Howard County has wonderful leadership in sustainability, your induction charging buses, your parks, uh, and those folks who are taking all of us into the future uh, well, it's a good good place for us to be. Uh, good followership uh, is a good partner to good leadership. So with that, I'll say uh, thanks to everybody for coming out, and thank you again, Ken, uh, for your leadership and uh, the opportunity to showcase electric vehicles. Let's get plugged in. So I, I need to cover a couple of just kind of logistical explanation points. Um, the, uh, the funding for these, uh, these chargers was um, 
through a Department of Energy grant uh, to the Maryland Energy Administration, a program called the Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Project okay. Program, uh, and uh, and Bevy, uh, who you just heard from from Jill, is uh, uh, helped coordinate and bring in uh, bring in grants for several of us to get several jurisdictions and uh, um, other. Uh, uh, institutions to get uh, these charging stations in and around the Baltimore area. And electric vehicles provide us with that potential opportunity to be able to get off, as, as Ken said, off foreign oil. Um, but there's a chicken and egg problem, right? We've People are not buying electric vehicles because the infrastructure isn't there. People aren't building the infrastructure because people don't own electric vehicles. And so you need to start somewhere. And so this is our first small step in starting somewhere, creating that infrastructure so when people do get electric vehicles, they have a place to plug them in. Uh, and then uh, it will only just start to grow from there. And, uh, and we look forward to continuing doing that and starting to dramatically reduce that chunk of our carbon footprint. So, uh, so yeah, so we'll be around. And again, thank you very much for coming.